So I'm a year into making content from my experience in Russia, and none of you told me that I completely forgot to include Zaryadie Park into my Red Square video. I only just figured out, and I blame you guys. Clearly this is your fault and not mine at all. I'm perfect in every way and I never forget to include literally the largest park in downtown Moscow that is like right next to Red Square. Anyways, regardless, I forgive you, you, I forgive you. So let's make up and let's move on from this. So, Zaryadie, more than just a bunch of silly splatterings of random syllables, is actually one of the first things that most people see when they go to downtown Moscow. You usually go to Red Square and take a lot of pictures and then you walk right past St. Basil's and boom, you're in Zaryadie. It's the former site of an entire district of Moscow that was flattened on several occasions during the Soviet Union to make room for various projects. From boat ramps to a hotel, every attempt was incredibly short-lived. Until 2017, the final edition of this futuristic-looking urban park was released to the public. And shortly after that, in 2018, Time Magazine considered it one of the world's greatest places. Which makes it even sillier that you, the viewer, forgot about it. The park is about 78,000 square meters big, of which about 25,000 is the insane indoor-outdoor concert hall. This concert hall has an entire small hill with flora that lasts all year, even in the snow, which makes it a very weird walk around when there's a meter of snow on the ground. Beneath this, the amphitheater also has a 430 car parking lot, which I don't know if that's too much or too little for how much they're fighting against nature here, but to this extent, the price tag of a half a billion US dollars starts to sound like it makes sense. The park has a ton of really beautiful features like a soaring bridge that makes it so you can see the Kremlin, the river, and one of the Stalin sisters all from one scenic spot. It has a freaking media center, an ice cave, a crazy looking concert hall, and even a sort of roller coaster type thing that's not a roller coaster that shows you spots from over 30 different places in Russia from a bird's eye view that's like you're flying over it. It's also lined by seven churches, each associated with one of the seven major feasts in Orthodox Christianity. So you can go from church to church to church and go from different major event in the story and life of Christ all around the park. Now that's all cool, but it wouldn't mean anything if the park on its own wasn't stunning and beautiful and it's honestly worth you seeing on its own. Each little section around the park is a different piece of Russian biome, I guess is the right word. It's like a Minecraft park, but all the biomes are from Russia. Now, that's awesome on its own, and there's lots of beautiful scenic areas to take pictures of, but if you want an even better view, don't just stop at the Kremlin. Head over to another park, Videnha, which I did another video about a couple weeks ago if you're interested. You can stop over at this really awesome pho restaurant that's right on the river, waiting for the boat to come because we're going on a boat tour. For less than $20, you can grab a two hour boat ride that covers all the coolest locations on the historic Moscow River. You'll get to have drinks and dinner and even dance if you feel like it on this truly early 2000s time capsule of Moscow. Some of the really cool places that you can see along the river is the Modern Art Museum, where you can see artists like Vrubel on exhibit. He's one of my favorite painters. You'll get a first-hand view of the horrific-looking Peter the Great King of the Seas statue, which was made by this Georgian sculptor who is hated by a lot of local residents here. You'll get probably the best view of the historic Red October Chocolate Factory, which I'll do a tour of in another video. But this is where most of the famous major Soviet candy brands were made and are still produced. You'll see the cool Neo-Russian Pepper House briefly, and right next to it, more importantly, you'll see the beautiful Christ the Savior Church. It's the main cathedral of Moscow, which I also covered in another video that you should see. And yes, this video will have plenty of shameless self-promotion to my massive backlog of other travel videos. So just strap in, relax, because I'm not going to stop doing it. Papa got bills to pay. After that, you'll finally cross the red Kremlin walls with the royal palace. You'll see all the various interior cathedrals and know that you're passing such famous figures as Ivan the Terrible and the other princes and czars of Russia who are buried there. After the walls, you'll pass one of the coolest views I've seen of Red Square, of St. Basil's Cathedral, and the Goom. And this area is just perfect for selfies. Finally, on this leg, you'll see a perfect view of Zaryadie Park. You'll pass the floating bridge and hopefully get some awesome slow motion B-rolls. 
You'll catch views of the churches, of some of the underground views that you can't see from the actual park. You can only see it from the river. You'll check out that dope amphitheater and realize how cool this park seems from this angle. At the very end of this first lap, you'll end with the Stalin sister on the embankment. It's easily the clearest view of her from anywhere in the city. It's completely unobstructed. You really can basically see the entire thing for all it's worth. But you're not done, because you're gonna bounce back one more time through everything that you've seen already from a different angle. Which for me as a YouTuber, is a beautiful way to stretch out content. But once you're done, go ahead, go inside, order a nice iced coffee for way too much money, and maybe go below deck, check out the bathroom with this crazy port toilet, and get ready, because in about 20 minutes, you need to go above deck again, because there's fresh meat to film. The first big stop that you'll see heading down this way is the headquarters of the Ministry of Defense here in Russia, which has a couple really interesting features beyond not being viewable from Yandex for some reason. Firstly, you'll see the old Soviet Union symbols on the front, which is matched by flanking icons of military saints on both sides, which I, I don't know. I think this contrast really expresses the modern Russia pretty well, at least from my perspective. It's in a way that a lot of people with very binary thinking, you know, you look at it and you see a contradiction, but Russian people look at it and it doesn't contradict for them. Maybe I'm just some old young man musing about this sort of seeming contradiction, but it's so normal here. And it doesn't seem to cause any philosophical or religious issues with the people walking around. For me, it's pretty strange and cool at the same time. There really isn't anywhere like Russia to show you living contrasts like these. Next on the chopping block, you'll see the parliamentary building, which might seem familiar to some of you who saw the coup in the 90s on television. The entire middle sections of this was on fire. There were tanks everywhere. This is the building that was broadcast on television during that time. It's still used and the best view of it by far is right here on the river. Even more than all of that, if you're lucky, you'll get to see the sunset over the second Moscow skyscraper, which is now a Radisson Hotel and the Hotel Ukraine, which is set in front of the new downtown Moscow, which is all those crazy big buildings in the background. This end view was worth the entire trip, so try and do this at sunset because you're gonna flip around here and it's straight back to port after this. You'll get to see the same cool views, you know, you'll see the electric bridges and the Golden Brains building, which is this really ugly looking thing that I found out, weirdly enough, has both the Bigfoot and UFO associations of Russia inside. You'll eventually make your way back to shore and the entire lights of the city by this point should be completely glowing in their full power. And it's probably no better place for me to end this video than right here on the bank. I realize now in hindsight that this video started as a Zariadie Park video, but at this point it kind of turned into something a little bit bigger. It's like a little mini tour of downtown. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing to my channel as I'm putting these bad boys out every week. And if I piqued your interest with this mini tour, please go check out my backlog of videos. I have way more in-depth videos on each of these places that I mentioned, as well as videos from Japan, Georgia, Latvia, and Armenia so far. And if that piques your interest, I appreciate you sticking around. I love making these videos and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye bye <laughs>